سائلي عن مذهبي وعقيدتي رزق الهدى من للهداية يسأل السلام عليكم أمير in France Welcome back to the second part of our book Anissa and her special class assembly And just like before, stay tuned until the end so that Abu Amira can go over some of the benefits from what we write today. So follow along with me. Enjoy. The auditorium was packed with cheerful mothers, fathers, grandparents, aunts, cousins, neighbors, friends, and fellow students. They all came to witness the special presentation they have heard so much about. Principal Bilal continued his address. Please give our young students your undivided attention as they step forward and recite their lines of poetry. First up is Yahya. Yahya stepped up. He quickly scanned the crowd and took a big deep breath. Have you heard the hadith of Ibn al-Khattab, sitting with Rasulullah and some of the other ashab, when a man came up whom their eyes never saw, white clothes, black hair, no sign he came from afar? Then Nur proudly stepped up and recited. He came close to the Prophet, placed his palms on his thighs, he placed his knees up to his etiquettes of the wise. Then he said, O Muhammad, and went forth with his questions. Inform me about Islam. What are the pillars it's built on? Now it was Sufyan's turn to recite. Clinching the mic, he said. So the Prophet responded, the very first of his tenets, is that you say the Shahada, you already heard its conditions. Second, that you establish the prayer five times. Every day, and Pesachat, and that you fast Ramadan. Next in line was Maria. Sister Amina wheeled her on stage towards the mic. Then she began to recite with a, with a loud, boisterous voice. Then the very last pillar is that you go make the Hajj. But this is only if you are able, done once in your life. Then he went on to ask, Tell me what is Iman? He said that you believe in Allah, the Most High, Al-Rahman. Aisha followed Miriam with her lines, That you believe in the angels who were created from light. That you believe in the books containing guidance and light. That you believe in the messengers, all of them who were named. And as for those who were not, they're still treated the same. Then after Aisha came Sarah, she read with a serious face. Then fifth, the resurrection. After you stay in the grave, or if you drowned in the sea, scattered about by the waves, we will all meet Allah, our bodies brought back to life. The day, the overwhelming, is fire or paradise. Abdur Rahman rated patiently as Amr recited. And as for the last pillar, belief in the decree. Whatever is willed by Allah, then that is what it will be. Anything that has passed you wasn't ever going to hit you. And whatever befalls you, it was never going to miss you. Abdur Rahman recited his lines. Then comes the last level. He mentioned of the religion. It is known as Ihsan, worship done with precision. That the strength of your faith has become so high, you worship Allah as though you see him with your own two eyes. Next on stage was Abdullah. Sister Amina led him on stage to recite. But however, if your faith drops lower than that, then you know he sees you and there's no doubt about that. The last he asked about the hour, so the prophet replied, Just as it's hidden from you, it's likewise hidden from I. At last, it was Anissa who was assigned the final lines of the poem. As she walked on stage, she remembered her father's advice. She grabbed the mic and recited with confidence. 
but upon it is signs when it's near the hereafter. One that the slave girl gives birth to her master. That you see the shepherds destitute and unbeautified, barefoot in competition, building towers that's high. And after he had left and finished the conversation, he said that was Jibral, the angel of revelation, in the form of a man who had never been seen. But the purpose of him coming was to teach you your deen. As she finished her lines, Anissa breathed a sigh of relief and headed backstage to join her peers. Principal Bilal stepped back onto the stage and gave the closing remarks. Alhamdulillah, the children did a wonderful job reciting these lines of poetry. Allahumma barik alayhim. On behalf of Sister Amina and her extraordinary class, I would like to thank you all for attending. We have gifts for the children in the front for doing such an excellent job. Please pick them up as you leave. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The parents greeted their children as they exited the auditorium. Anissa's parents met her with a big hug. Sweetheart, you did an amazing job, her mother exclaimed. Her father then said to her, Alhamdulillah, we heard you loud and clear. Your hard work paid off. May Allah reward you. Amen. Amen, Anissa said as she hugged her father tightly. Alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy for me. Anissa picked up her gift, gave salams to Sister Amina, and left with her parents. As they walked to the car, Anissa said, Omi and Abi, you know what? They both asked curiously, what, what honey? honey? Inshallah. I can't wait to learn the rest of the poem. The end. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu, wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Amira and friends. And thank you, Sister Basma, for reading with us once again today, our final reading session, completing the book. Okay, so the benefits we're going to be discussing today are actually based upon the hadith of Jibril. There are Sheikh Anwar Wright, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, wrote in a book called The Core Beliefs of a Muslim in Poetry. The first benefit is the five pillars of Islam, and they are as follows. The Shahada, and that is to testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except for Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. The next being Salat, your five daily prayers. The third being Sakat, paying 2.5% of your annual wealth to the poor. Psalm, or fasting during the month of Ramadan, the month in which the Quran was revealed. Finally, performing Hajj, which is pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca, once in your lifetime if you are able to do so. Second benefit is the six articles of faith. That is to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day, and the pre decree, the good and the bad of it. All right, now the third and final benefit is the levels of Islam, and the highest of them being Ihsan. And that is to worship Allah as though you can see Him, but even though you cannot see Him, you know that He sees you. Thank you so much for joining us all again and completing another book with us. Jazakallah khair. وَبَرَكَلَهُ فِيكُمْ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ يَا سَائِلِي عَمْ مَذْهَبِي وَعَقِيدَتِي رُزِقَ الْهُدَى مَنْ لِلْهِ